How do story arcs affect an anime? Let's talk about that. What's up guys, it's your boy, and today I'm going to be talking about the concept of arcs, how they're used in anime, and exactly how they affect their respective storylines. Arcs as a concept isn't really kind of a new or, or unique to anime thing, right? There are different mediums, like a TV show or a comic book or anything like that, can have different story arcs that progress the plot. Uh, but the, they're really prevalent in anime, um, and the way that they are utilized can really make or break the quality of a show. So I'm going to talk about first some shows that may have arcs in them, but really arcs aren't as important to the overarching plot, and then talk about shows that have really kind of defined and strict arcs, just to kind of differentiate them a little bit, um, and then go into what exactly would be a show that has good arcs in comparison to a show that may not have quite as good of arcs, and I have one opinion in particular that might surprise you, so stick around and let's go ahead and get into the content, but real quick before we do that, you know the drill at this point. I, I mean, we're on YouTube of all platforms, so if you do like the content, if you like what I'm doing here, if you like anime in general, that's kind of what I talk about, so if you give the video a thumbs up and then maybe click the subscribe button down below, I'd really appreciate it, but with that said, let's get on to the content. And that starts with a couple shows that don't really have arcs. And I'm going to explain why they don't have arcs in the traditional, like, anime sense, right? And that doesn't mean that these don't have sections of their story, but arcs are really kind of strictly defined, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so shows like Your Lion April. Your Lion April is a show that I absolutely adore, and it really has a an overarching plot line that starts at the very beginning and continues on to the very end that concerns um, our main character, Arima Kosei, and then it goes on to, and it, the, like, the plot line develops with Kaori uh, Miyazono, and kind of the dynamic they have, right? That's the overarching thing, and yes, there are like little intermittent stories within that, but you never kind of lose sight of that overarching plot line, right? And I tend to consider those shows to not have really defined or distinct arcs as much as they do just kind of like a single arc that takes up the course of a season. What I'm talking about is a show that would have, say, anywhere from 12 episodes to even 100 plus episodes that has a, a three episode chunk or a 10 episode chunk where you focus on one particular story, then you move on to it and go to a completely other almost unrelated story. There may be some interrelated things, but in general, you're looking at a completely different, like, plot line. I'm gonna give two examples of shows that do this really well, and I'm gonna give two examples of shows that do this not super well. And the one in particular is in the, the, the not super well category, and I'm actually gonna start with it, and that is Oshinoko. Now, I know a lot of you are like, but I love Oshinoko. Oshinoko's a great anime. What are you talking about? And yes, you're absolutely right. Oshinoko, I personally think, is one of, and will probably remain, one of the best anime of this entire year, but I don't think it does the arc structure very well. And I do think, to the, to the credit of Oshinoko, um, it does have the weight or added kind of hindrance of that first episode being long. Um, at an hour and 22 minutes. So it has an excuse, right? It's not like um, it follows the structure that most 12 episode shows do. It has 11 episodes with the caveat that the first one is basically a full arc in and of itself. And that first episode, I've talked about it in a prior video, is absolutely excellent. So yes, it does have kind of the excuse for why the arcs maybe feel a little bit broken up, but I would argue that the arc in the middle of the show that deals with one specific character and their experience with the entertainment industry, I want to say episodes kind of like 5, 6, and 7 roughly uh, are the ones that deal with this in particular character, um, happens right smack dab in the middle of the show and it's the best arc um, by far in my opinion because it really kind of delves into some emotional consequences and things and, and gets at a lot of deeper... Um, meaning within the entertainment industry, which is what Oshinoko already comments really well on, and I, I think in that arc in particular, it really gets at some of the really modern and interesting kind of coming-of-age stuff, right? 
And then you have the last few episodes, episodes probably eight or nine through 11 out of that, right? And they focus on kind of the setup for what will be the next season. It, 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 at least that's kind of how uh, it, it portrays it, right? It kind of, I won't say it leaves off on particularly a cliffhanger, but at the same time, it very much leaves the door open to we're gonna make more episodes, so just kind of sit and wait for a little bit while we do that. It feels kind of broken up in the pacing because the show and the content and the story is excellent, but I'm kind of left at the very end thinking, huh, well, that was a little anticlimactic. And that generally is why I think in the, the state that it's in right now, it's a 9 out of 10 show, it's not a 10 out of 10, right? It's that good. Even with just having 11 episodes and it being broken up, I'll still shout its praises, but in terms of doing arcs, I don't think it do does the structure justice. Another show that doesn't do arcs very much justice, and a more broad example, um, and one that I would like to talk about a lot more, is something like Fairy Tale. And Fairy Tale is one that I really want to do kind of a deep dive in, as I have a lot of thoughts about it, and many people have some uh, really strong opinions on Fairy Tale, but for the purposes of this video, the first season is 175 episodes. That is a lot of episodes for a single season of any show. One Piece fans are like, no, that's nothing. But at least for a casual fan, more like myself, who maybe can watch an episode or two uh, a night, if that, when I'm like at my peak anime watching times, 175 episodes is a lot. But I've watched all of the episodes in Fairy Tale Season 1. And the problem with it is some arcs feel really, really long. There's an arc um, right kind of smack dab in the middle of the show. It's called the Edelus arc. And the premise of it was really good. I actually kind of liked the change of pace that it brought to the show. The problem is it lasted about 10 episodes longer than it should have, and it really broke off the pacing that you had with some of the shorter arcs that were really kind of snappy and powerful and really hit their marks well. Because there were a couple arcs earlier on in Fairy Tale that I quite liked, and there were ones after Edelus that I liked, but Edelus really just felt like it was a time-consuming arc. It was like, we're gonna really stretch this one out until we can get to the next one. And I would understand why that would be done. If you're an animation company and you have to make an ongoing series, you have to come up with a, a way to fill the, the episodes, right? Week after week after week. But at the same time, it can take away from the overall value of the show. If they were given a set amount of episodes and they had to hit a certain quota, it might have fit the, the overall mood of the show better. And that carries on with a lot of different shonen. That's something that you could not just apply to Fairy Tale. it's just the one that I've watched and can give kind of more specific examples to. And that tends to be an overarching problem in general. I actually think it's alleviated really well in something like Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm not going to talk in length about Jujutsu Kaisen like I have the other two so far, but Jujutsu Kaisen had a set amount of episodes from the start, and it allowed the, the animators to really say, we're going to pack in all the stuff that we can to this limited amount of space. And it really allowed for some great animation, some great action scenes, but also really good pacing. Um, and that's one of the many reasons why Jujutsu Kaisen is an excellent show I would highly recommend. Speaking of shows that I would highly recommend, I'm going to mention two shows that I think really do arcs right. And, and I bring up these two shows in particular because they do, in fact, have really, really strong arcs. These are not things that have really an overarching storyline. They go from thing to thing to thing. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. And I've talked about Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai in the past and the fact that I enjoy it. But one aspect of it that makes it in particular really, really good is the way that it sets out its arcs. You have roughly the same length arc for each individual character that the main guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, kind of works with, right? And what makes it particularly good is that it's character driven, right? You have a character that you are going to be focusing on for those few episodes, and after those few episodes are over, typically that character comes in and helps along the journey, right? So they're not completely forgotten about. That time was not useless. But at the same time, you do have a new thing each and every arc of the show. So I think there's probably four or five arcs total in the show. I can't 
quite remember offhand. It's, it's been a bit since I've watched it, can you tell? But either way, among those four or five arcs, you really feel a good sense of satisfaction with, okay, premise episode one, story two, story three, story four, and then conclusion episode five, right? It, it just does a good job of going full circle, getting to tell its story, getting to introduce you to this character, and by the end, having a resolution to that character's problem. And it does so with a continuity that doesn't feel choppy. And that really does make all of the difference, and it's what makes Bunny Girl Senpai uh, particularly strong in the way that it tells its story. Because it's not everything, right? Because Oshinoko is a great sh show, even though I think that it's kind of choppy with the way that it does its arcs. But a show that maybe an 8 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10 can be elevated up if the arc's pacing is done right. And I think it is in the case of Bunny Girl Senpai. One other show that I'm not completed with, but I can already tell. I, I don't even need to, to see all the episodes to know it has really good arcs. To Your Eternity. And To Your Eternity... I had a viewer recommend to me, and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to think of it. In the first couple episodes, I was like, okay, yeah, it's focusing on this character, and then something happens with that that then leads you to go, oh, oh, this isn't kind of how I was expecting it to go. And then it goes into another direction, and it has a whole new storyline with whole new characters, and really drives its point home. By the end of that arc, I was in tears, and it just executed it absolutely perfectly. The reason I, I don't say anything about what happens is because it's just that powerful. It is it is worth watching, and the, the power that it has when you watch it is just so evident. The reason why I talk about the arcs, though, is because the arcs, with the way that they move, it transitions into a completely different story. Like, completely different. There's only one character that remains the same and yet it feels like a journey like you're going on an adventure you're you're meeting these people this this environment these places and as you meet them as you as you go along through the story with the character it really just resonates with you because that's how life goes you meet people you go through a phase of life with them and then typically those connections are lost after a, a decent amount of time. I mean, take school life. You go to high school, you meet a lot of people, you stay with those people, then you go to college or maybe you start work and those people that you knew in, in high school or, or your younger school days may not be the connections that you hold on to. And so it's really kind of neat to see a show that works so well in the way that it does its arcs and meeting characters and how exactly it ties its, itself all together through this one individual character. I'm not done with it yet, so I'm curious if it ties itself back, if it kind of loops back around. It very well might, but in terms of doing arcs, it's already off to an amazing start for me. And, and that all said, I, whether it goes full circle or not, the way that it portrays its arcs is possibly the best element of that, sh well, that in the story. The story is just excellent. The way that it tells its story is excellent, but it's structured within those arcs, which really makes it a truly great show. And with that said, that's about all I have for today's video. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, feel free to leave a comment, or if you agree or disagree with my opinion, you can always leave a comment on that too. I always read all of the comments, and I might even respond if you're lucky. Who knows? So with that all said, that's about all I got. I'll see you next week with another video and I'll see you next time.